Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad and today we're talking about IHT which is a very exciting blockchain project that is currently already on exchanges but today we're going to unpack exactly what it is, what it stands for and why it is tech potentially such a good blockchain. To do that we have a very important person, the chairman and founder of this project and that is none other than Ricky Ng. Ricky, thank you very much for being on the channel today. Hi Brad, hi everybody, so let's meet all of you. So I'm very happy to be here to answer all of your questions and to talk to Brad and uh, to answer, I mean, to express uh, what actually we are doing. Yeah. Awesome, that's the plan, mate. So we're going to get stuck into uh, unpacking it thoroughly bit by bit yeah. with questions. But firstly, it's important, I suppose, to explain the what in terms of what the website explains IHT is. And that is essentially uh, a real estate protocol, uh, a global real estate cloud platform as well. And we're going to understand how that fits into the context of real estate currently. So Ricky, essentially, in a nutshell, what is IHT uh, for the person who perhaps doesn't know much about it? How could you explain it simplistically? Okay, so uh, to answer it in a very layman terms, it's just like the uh, uh, real estate crowdfunding, but we mark everything on the blockchain. So blockchain enable us to split the assets, to record the assets ownership and also the return, and to transfer to each other. So it enable us to uh, have the liquidity of the assets, to uh, be transparent, uh, and also we can uh, share access to each other uh, regarding the, the uh, access projects. Yeah, for example, we allow working with some hotels project, so we can uh, get early stage engagement and uh, in uh, before the uh, hotel we do one into operation so that we can have a light early bird offer of, uh, of the membership, of the ownership, so that we have a, a better return in the future. So uh, uh, that's, a, that's a very simple user case that we are building on. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So let's unpack that a little bit further. So uh, once again, you're representing a global real estate cloud platform. So real estate is the yeah. key feature of what you represent. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that in the context of some of the challenges and problems that you saw, you foresaw in the industries that existed and why, that, why there was a gap and, and, and that you can address with your services and your products. Okay, cool. So uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, real estate uh, industry is very traditional. So uh, many uh, uh, like the fundraising, the operation, and also the marketing uh, is very we call so called old school. Mm -hmm. So that uh, with the blockchain repackaging uh, with the crypto world, so we can see uh, before we develop a hotel, actually we are also already have the community. So uh, the community will enjoy the, I mean, will participate into the investment of the uh, early stage development of the hotel or the resort, mm -hmm. and uh, they will get uh, into the uh, some membership program, so that um, it's uh, more easy for them to do marketing in the future. So that uh, they will also uh, involved in the like co-management of the project. Yeah, right. so that uh, it's a, it's just like. Uh, you can involve in a hotel's development. You can own a Hilton, you part of the Hilton. Mm -hmm. You can own part of the maybe a, a certain hotel in uh, Singapore, in uh, Japan, or in anywhere uh, around the world. So uh, personally, I don't have any property because I miss every single chance of getting into the property market. Mm -hmm. But uh, through this investment, I can property we engage into the property market by mm -hmm. sharing the assets. I see. Okay. So that's an important point. Obviously, you're from an Asian background, and the reason I, only, I broached that is because the costs of living, particularly with regard to real estate, is very expensive in the Asian belt. Very so, expensive. So this provides a means for people to take part in the real estate game. Yeah, exactly. Because I actually, personally, I'm from Hong Kong. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I grew up in Hong Kong, and I worked in Hong Kong before. And uh, after I uh, go into China to uh, have a startup uh, for several years, Mm -hmm. I found that, oh my God, I can't afford for uh, getting a property, I mean, a, a apartment anymore mm -hmm. because uh, Hong Kong's property is very expensive. It's the most ex expensive in the world. Right. So uh, I'm thinking about if uh, we have anything to do with the sharing assets idea, we can share the assets to each other so we can still have the population, I mean, the, the property uh, valuation gain, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't need to have a really engage for a whole apartment. Okay. So um, that's, that's where the concept comes from. And uh, we, we look at Airbnb, we look at WeWork, mm -hmm. they are more, we call it on the demand side. Right. For example, uh, they are, they are uh, engaging the, uh, the travel demand, the uh, working space demand was, uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But uh, regarding the sharing access, well, which we call the supply side, we don't see any uh, certificated product before. 
yeah, uh, especially in the blockchain area. So that uh, we we think that we would like to have uh, such kind such uh, an idea to implement into the uh, real life. Yeah. Right. So essentially, you're doing two things. You're bringing it into the blockchain domain, which is certainly not Air the yeah. Airbnb does not do. And also, you're doing it yeah. in such a way that's long term focused and not short term for your short term stays. Yeah. So let's talk about now that in the context of your dot com, your iHouse dot com. That essentially yeah. is the blockchain cloud platform that we're speaking yeah. of. So let's discuss that. What is it and what is it for? Okay. Okay. So uh, iHouse.com is actually a uh, real, real estate blockchain car platform. Uh, what we do is exactly it's just like a property VC. So for example, yeah, we've, uh, we, have a, uh, we have approached a uh, certain of uh, SS owner uh, across Asia. For example, in Japan, in uh, Singapore, in Southeast Asia, and also in China, mm -hmm. so that uh, we as the VC uh, part of the like the VC's job to review the project. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 they they first of all need to have a land, of course, of a of a uh, uh, of a uh, 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 just like the Japan's project. They the uh, landlord already have got the land already, right. but they don't have uh, enough uh, funding to develop the uh, uh, resort or the hotel so that uh, after we see the project details we think that oh that's a great idea and the uh, cash flow projection is very good uh, they have a business model they have the uh, sales and marketing plan they have the op operation plan so that we help them to do car funding uh, through the traditional and also the uh, in, and also the crypto world mm -hmm. uh, so we have two ways one is the traditional legal structure just like those like property uh, VC or PE do right another way one is like uh, those uh, is, is a just say like, uh, we call uh, so called we call ATO so that uh, people can invest through token yes like, we're gonna, I'm uh, gonna talk about that so I just yeah. want to interrupt so we yeah, exactly. can do that in steps but just focusing yeah. on the iHouse itself if we can clarify that that's the cloud platform so if you could paint a picture for us in terms of what is housed inside that you talked about the ATO which we'll talk about later it's very unique uh, token yeah. uh, structure but really what does it look like if I was looking at this platform what, what would I see investors using this for as developers who are utilizing this to try and capitalize okay the flow is like for example the access owner come to ihouse.com and then left a message or find our, 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 our BD uh, business director and mm -hmm. say oh uh, I would like to uh, uh, raise an ATO with we, we so-called ATO project sure. so that after they, their submission and then we will review their white paper we will review their business plan we will everything so just like we see mm. and then we will get into the next step if uh, we get their assets published to the uh, platform I so see. that we will uh, announce to the public so oh, everyone can uh, join this project development okay. okay so people can start the crowdfunding and the ATO uh, process by investing money here so that's uh, basically it's a it's a just like we link up uh, the assets owner and also the the, the uh, money source all together right. and sure. we mark everything on the blockchain. Yeah. Okay, so Ricky, in, in a sense, you've got those two aspects inside iHouse, but no doubt the main focus of the supply is coming from those, um, those asset owners, as you said. Are they predominantly developers at the moment in your design or can they be anyone? Can they be just a lay uh, an asset owner or do they need to have a considerable amount of capital? Okay, very good question. Uh, actually, we right now uh, we only uh, start with uh, B two B right now. Okay. So uh, we work with the business. I mean the SS owner and also the uh, uh, um, I mean the uh, uh, financial institutions. Mm -hmm. That is a B two B play. Sure. But in the long run, we would like to open to a public to let more end user to join. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, if uh, there's the um, the process is getting very smooth, so that uh, we will probably maybe say, oh, every single person can upload the assets themselves, right. and then we provide all the service document and all the uh, process flow and then they can build their own community and then raise their ATO. So, uh, but uh, that's a, at least, I mean, next year, because uh, uh, this year we would like to start more educational and also have like certain mm -hmm. projects uh, on the platform running and uh, to make sure every project is running good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, before we uh, roll out the end user uh, business model. Yeah, I see. So in, essentially uh, the, the lay homeowner, let's say, they're not going to be able to use this just yet as an asset owner, but that's the plan later on. Yeah, later on. Yeah, okay. because uh, C2C is uh, probably the uh, operation is, uh, is more complicated because mm -hmm. uh, you, need, you need to uh, let the users to judge themselves. So okay. I think uh, uh, that is an investment product. Mm -hmm. So that I think uh, we need more certain control on that 
because uh, we we are just like a just like I said, we are like a uh, property VC. So uh, we will need to review every single project that comes into our platform. We need to make sure the project's quality. Okay. And uh, after people start making money, so we think that oh, we can uh, release a little bit more to the end users, maybe to the large uh, access owner. And uh, uh, to to those I having uh, more, for example, the the total worth of the assets maybe like uh, up to ten million US, they uh, get for example uh, three to five, uh, 30, uh, 30 to fifty percent of mm -hmm. the assets onto the platform to do the ATO. Okay. So we would need to have a certain kind of control, but a lot uh, just that the assets owner put everything on a blockchain platform and waste money, and then they just run away. So that's not our plan. So right. we like to run it with a. Uh, very uh, legitimate way and also under control and uh, to see how can we help the assets owner and also the investors to maximize their return. I see. So you have a very structured plan in your roadmap. But let's talk about the costs involved for the current asset owner and that obviously is your business you know, focus. So what would it cost someone utilizing this service to actualize <coughs> their asset onto uh, the uh, platform itself? Okay, so actually we don't charge much cost. Mm -hmm. we, we so-called the cost uh, in the platform. Okay. But uh, what the assets only need to share is the profit margin of their profits okay. to the uh, end users uh, financial institution. Because uh, uh, once they got on our platform, iHouse.com, they need to buy a uh, IHT to, uh, 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 to be the, like, the uploading fee and also they need to do air job to their retail investors. For example, if uh, uh, a a uh, person uh, they they would like to raise like thirty million US, we would suggest them to buy ten percent of the IHT to distribute to the end users. Yeah, yeah so that uh, people can get uh, the investors can get both the property valuation upside and also the uh, IHT as the air job altogether. So that that's a more crypto play. I see. Uh, compared to the traditional fund, yeah, because traditional fund they would just have the like the variation gain and also the uh, uh, maybe the uh, so called the interest and also the um, like the uh, uh, profit sharing. Okay, mm -hmm. so they they now own uh, besides the uh, variation gain and also uh, they have the uh, air job so that they have something that quick uh, right. immediately. I see. So there's a yield for that um, asset owner. But obviously, as you yeah. said, to clarify, it's 1% of the cost of the total asset when they append that onto the system. And that is done via your utility token. It's not done via fiat at that point. So can I ask you directly, what is the benefit fundamentally? If, you were, if I was an enterprise or if I was in someone yeah. wanting to invest in you with, uh, with significant assets, why should I do it? What's the biggest, what's the, what's the reason I would want to do that? In terms of value, okay, let me let me give you a very similar uh, uh, example. Okay, so um, so for the SS owner, they may have a name, for example, like cost uh, uh, the market variation, for example, um, like ten million US. Okay, so they would like to have a resort built on the, the that particular land, yep. and uh, the the building cost is very expensive. Actually, it's like like up to like ten to twenty million US. Right. Okay, so. Right now, when you go to the financial institution to say uh, to 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 have the loan to apply for the loan for this uh for this uh land, mm -hmm. okay, to build a resort or hotel, so they will only approve like fifty percent of the money to you at a very high interest rate. Sure. Okay, so that's a quite normal uh, fundraising environment uh, across Asia. So US may be better because mm -hmm. uh, the uh, reputation and also the financial uh, system is more mature. Right. But uh, in uh, Asia markets like uh, Australia, like Japan, like uh, Southeast Asia, most of them can only have uh, like 50% of the money. Right. So actually that's not enough uh, for them to have a like the whole construction plan. Right. So that at this moment they need to uh, have uh, some property VC or the um, like the, uh, the investors comes in to invest altogether. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, be besides those like uh, uh, the big uh, giants of the property market industry, in the in the industry, industry they uh, don't have uh, enough money to invest. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the outcome is uh, the assets owner having good assets, they don't have the money to develop their project. I see. And uh, so at this point, we would like to help. Uh, at the same, uh, at the I mean, um, uh, first of all, we like to have the have the assets owner to 
uh, we solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And the other way we would like to let the retail investors come in to co-develop the project. Okay. Because uh, I have talked to many, many friends, they say, oh, if you have such kind of product, I'll definitely buy it. Because uh, they, they don't trust in any more the property markets, uh, mm -hmm. they will keep uh, raising again for five or 10 years. They think that they will fluctuate from now on because uh, it's already very high. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, mm -hmm. and the uh, US uh, will start raising the interest rate. Yeah, so uh, that's the fundamental, uh, a good timing for us to roll this product because uh, uh, people start to think about, oh, will property still gain the variation every year just like before, like mm -hmm. the 10 years before, uh, while every people waste uh, like a lot of money. So um, while at this stage, I think uh, it's very good for us to uh, roll out this product because uh, people start to think about, uh, uh, do I have any alternative uh, to invest in the property market? Right, yeah. let's, let's talk right. about that in your model. Uh, and the reason why is it's a perfect segue into explaining the platform as a conduit or a connective between the asset owner or the asset itself and the user and the financial institution like IE bank or credit union as well just some examples of some sources of income. <clears throat> so you've mentioned before that typically in normal markets the layperson like you or I could not necessarily go and act, uh, you know, uh, utilize this service to go and purchase a property outright and now we can do it in bite-sized chunks. Likewise, the business can also offer in bite-sized chunks to the user. So what I wanted yeah. to ask is, can you explain that, that three-step process? There's three layers involved as well, but let's first start with the user, the, the financial institution, the IHT platform, and the asset. How does that system work? Okay, so um, first of all, we have the, have the users that would like to interest, uh, invest in the uh, property markets but they don't have uh, enough money to buy the whole building yep. or involved in the whole project so that they, like for example, take uh, 10,000 uh, US dollar uh, to a financial institution or a crowdfunding platform we work with mm -hmm. uh, so that they put their money into the finance FI or we call the crowdfunding platform. Okay, after uh, after this step, uh, we can, uh, the financial institution and the crowdfunding platform can work with IHT, I mean can work with iHouse.com, sorry, mm -hmm. so uh, to uh, uh, purchase certain portion of the project. Right. Okay, just like the hotel I talked, uh, I, I I talked about in uh, Japan. Sure. Okay, so uh, this uh, ten thousand US will be invested by the financial institution to the uh, SS owner uh, through iHouse.com. So uh, basically, we won't touch the money. So uh, the money will directly go to the uh, SS owner, but uh, we will have a uh, escrow account for. Mm -hmm the uh, money money flow so that we will know that every single uh, uh, I mean the, the budget will go to the uh, SS owner and we will control the uh, LS, the uh, operator to control the uh, financial and the operation status of the uh, SS owner and their operating operating team right so that that's that's uh, basically all the flow of iHouse.com and uh, IHT is get uh, here what was the usage is uh, I, I've talked about it before, mm -hmm. uh, which the SS owner need to uh, um, pay certain percentage to upload their assets to the platform and then to buy uh, iHealth token to distribute to the end users or the financial institution as air job. Yeah, so that's uh, this is the way they do so that we are serving as the tech and marketing platform here. I see. So there's a, there's a requirement for the user or the asset owner to convert into the IHT at some point through this process. Can we talk about now your smart contracts? Because you have a unique smart contract specifically geared inside your platform called an ATO. Can you tell us about that ATO and why that's so revolutionary? Uh, I think ATO is uh, the, the, the concept. Uh, I mean, um, we, we can't say it's revolutionary, but uh, I don't know why before uh, I don't see any people doing. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we, are, we are just referencing reference to the ICO concept. Mm -hmm. So people get the crowdfunding and then they issue the token to the, uh, to the, to the uh, investors. Okay, so that's the logic of ICO, mm -hmm. so initial call offering. Uh, actually, ATO is we call the uh, access tokenized offering, mm -hmm. so that when as it's uh, actually a higher uh, requirement of the uh, projects to get it to get on ATO. So at least they have an access. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't let those like just pure idea to get on our platform because uh, uh, it involves 
too much of the uh, I mean the the uh, to reveal their white paper and uh, it, it also uh, a certain I mean uh, it's high risk actually yes uh, I think it's and, very high risk and, yeah. and certainly even we do it in the ICO yeah sure and given that it's an yeah. asset uh, uh, an asset offering essentially there's a lot more legal um, implications that we'll talk about later yeah. to to ensure yeah. that that's that is uh, properly done and and done in a way that safeguards each person's investment when they put, whether it be from the asset or from the user's position. And now if we yeah. could talk about the three excuse me if we could talk about the three layers. Now in that sense you have 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, you have your pass service. So these are service yeah. layers. You have your protocol, then your blockchain and then your financial exchange. Can you tell us about mm -hmm. those three key layers in the context of your roadmap? Okay, so uh, so uh, uh, actually, it's quite easy to explain. So okay. one point is like we help the SS owner to do the um, to do the uh, ATO uh, diversity for our platform. Okay, so that we locate the SS owner and then we help them to do fundraise uh, every month and uh, every week. Yeah, so that uh, we also manage the assets all together. So mm -hmm. that's uh, we call one point version because it's quite easy to kick start. And uh, two point is like. Uh, we are getting on to a more module and also uh, uh, platform base. So we will um, um, uh, just like w what we said, it's a like blockchain as a service. So we provide a blockchain platform to the SS owner to let them to manage to raise the ATO themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that we don't get involved too much access there. So we will just uh, being the gatekeeper to help them to uh, make, make sure the uh, uh, case is legit and then uh, uh, it's uh, legally correct and also you have uh, enough uh, um, uh, fundraising and also marketing channels to close your fundraising. Okay, so that's the and, second. And just to jump uh, in there, partner. just to jump in there with the BAS, the, this blockchain as a service, what that's going to do yeah. is give autonomy like never before to those who want to, uh, you know, engage in the real estate market because right yeah, now yeah, you we, can't we, engage in that way. Exactly. We will just work with different uh, uh, property developers so that we let them to have uh, their own platform. We just uh, use that as, as the back end mm -hmm. and uh, they can upload the uh, uh, SS themselves uh, to raise money here, there so I that see. they also find investors themselves, of course. Yeah. So Ricky, so, that, that's uh, not happening yet, yet though, is it? That's part of the... Um, the, the that's part of all map. The, yeah, yeah. All map. Okay, so let's talk about now your financial exchanges in the, in the long-term plan in 3.0. Okay, so financial exchange is just like a uh, uh, public chain with the uh, property uh, exchange, just like those like crypto exchange. Mm -hmm. So every single property will have a token to represent themselves and then to trade on the uh, financial exchange. But uh, definitely this uh, lead more legal and also technical requirement because uh, it uh, may be uh, uh, we need to consult all the legal mm -hmm. advice on this Yeah, after uh, seeing the full document of uh, the security and also the utility exchange. So that's two ways because uh, right now we work with both uh, structure. One is the secure, I mean the traditional structure, one is the token structure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually can have uh, uh, both financial exchange there. So we will see how can we work this easily uh, without too much, I mean, uh, uh, regulation and also the legal uh, uh, compliance issues. I see. So, uh, yeah, we'll have the solution uh, uh, in the next couple of months and uh, and then let the people have a more liquidity on buying the ATO product. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, actually a secondary market for the ATO product. Okay, yeah. and obviously the challenge is going to also be one of compliance for different regulations and jurisdictions in Asia and as you build out globally. So no doubt yeah. you're consulting with a lot of different parties to do that. Yeah, but uh, the good news is uh, we actually have many lawyers just to work with us all together. Mm -hmm. So I think in Hong Kong, in uh, uh, in uh, China, in US, in Japan, we all have different lawyers. So that um, it's uh, quite easy to get all the legal advice there and uh, uh, to work. Uh, I mean, with a different legal team. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Considering you're starting in Hong Kong. Now, if we could go back to your um, platform for a moment, I want to talk about two things that are unique in the way that you've designed your platform. You allow yeah. for time stamping to be important, but more importantly, splitting. Now, can we talk about how you use splitting in your token, uh, sorry, in your, uh, your ATO to be a provision that, you know, in, from a technological sense, provides for uh, the, the bite-sized um, components to be distributed, rather than have the whole cost of a real estate uh, 
you know, asset, the splitting okay. and timestamp. Yeah, actually splitting the assets is, is not as difficult as everybody think okay. because just like stocks, okay, you can buy stocks with just like you can buy one stock, uh, I mean, one stock uh, of Amazon and you can buy 1000 stock of Amazon because there's a unit price, right? The property, um, the, the problem is that they don't have a unit price by the market because of that's, that's not liquid yet. Right. So it's a nice a cold loop deal. Yeah, from people to people or from uh, uh, institution to institution. Mm. So uh, the, the problem we are doing is like, the, the product we are doing is like, we try to enable every asset to have a uh, variation there to be tradable. Yeah, so that you can trade with the token or with the, with the uh, unit price that we preserve. I see, yeah, so, and, and, uh, essentially, and essentially you're making it divisible rather than having a whole asset value as we see for example if you scroll through and you look at the cost of a house cost of a hotel it's it's exactly. a complete price but you're making it divisible to again um, exactly. be able to access a chunk of it yeah so it's just like for example just like uh, uh, ebay okay so before mm -hmm. you, you don't have the uh, market value for a secondary market for the lap laptop right mm -hmm. so you, you now have the uh, market value because you have the market pace and then you can uh, 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 to match both side, buy side and sell side, and then you have the value there. So that's exactly what we are doing. So okay. because per personally, I'm from uh, uh, Yahoo before, so uh, we know about marketplace very well. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about now consumer safeguards. You call them users, the people who are investing. So what safeguards are you putting in for two people? Firstly, for the institution, what in terms of underwriting, what mechanisms are available to them as a part of the process, and also what are you doing to safeguard the ATO itself with regard to the asset provider? Yeah. Okay. So uh, because I we call ourselves property VC, so you can see uh, we have uh, all the uh, like the uh, legal terms and also the right to protect the investment from the investors. Yeah. For example, we protect the investors' right through we will escrow the uh, the uh, assets owners right on the uh, on the asset yes. to a third party legal yes. yeah so that that's the first one secondly we will, we will also own certain percent of the uh, assets uh, 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 by uh, ihouse.com yeah so that uh, we will have the uh, right to declare i mean to to do the uh, due diligence and mm -hmm. also the uh, like for example the those like for example the refinancing or to sell at a cheap price whatsoever some in the uh, abnormal case, yeah, we will try to avoid that. Okay, okay so we have the full control of the uh, uh, assets. Okay, right. so yeah. Well, let's talk about that though in the context of these two things proof of author authenticity and proof of legitimacy. They are two mechanisms you've built into your design to ensure that there are processes to make sure that the asset provider is legitimate and not a, not a scam. So, can you explain why that's so important? Yeah, definitely will be very important because uh, we need to do due diligence by uh, uh, different parties. For example, the legal, the uh, I mean the variation team, property variation uh, firm, and also the due diligence firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have the full process of just like the traditional uh, property guys what they do. Yeah, but at the same time, we open for uh, some new channels for the uh, crypto community to join this investment. Okay. Because yeah. uh, actually, from understanding, uh, crypto community they, they are very green in investment. Right. Yeah, many of them are maybe the first time or maybe uh, the I mean they don't do buy too much like property or stocks. They just invest in crypto. So uh, we enable them to get into a like a traditional um, uh, uh, investment channel past mm -hmm. the crypto uh, investment return. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about the the perspective of the bank or the financial institution. Obviously, they want to ensure that they can underwrite to secure their own investment and, in, and ensure yeah. it. More importantly, so is that going to be possible through this process? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think uh, because we work with different uh, financial institution, uh, some of some of them are maybe a uh, fund. Some of them may be uh, FA, some of them may, may be uh, mutual trust, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, so unit trust, okay. So uh, they actually, they are very open to such kind of product as long as we follow their uh, rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, this product is not just like those uh, monsters that goes, goes out suddenly, mm -hmm. but actually it, they work uh, for a long time on such kind of traditional financial products. 
just they don't have the way to uh, better market, uh, do the marketing and also to build a community to share the ownership and also distribute the tokens value for air job. Okay. So that uh, we just add some more element in terms of the crypto community to the traditional uh, property fundraising channels. Yeah. Okay, well thank you for explaining that, that flow from the user to the asset owner. Now if we could talk yeah. about subscription in terms of cost, and I really want to clarify this because your design, as, as we've discussed privately before, is designed more like a timeshare structure. So no doubt when you're purchasing as a consumer, you, you're purchasing the rights to, yeah. the, to the property you're, and you're doing that via subscription. So can you explain that really carefully for and succinctly for us? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I call this a deal structure of uh, the um, uh, property fundraising. So first structure is like we deal with the uh, uh, property fund, property VC, and also uh, uh, and also the equity investors. Right. So what their investment is like investing in a share of the company owning the assets. So this is the first structure. We we call that traditional structure. Okay. The second structure is like the crypto structure or say the blockchain structure. So they are buying because they the, they if they pay through uh, BTC or ETH or USDT or even IHT, so they can't tie with any shares there. Otherwise, it comes into a security product. Right. Okay. So which is something yeah, you're so, not. Let's clarify that right now. You're not a security. You're a utility. Yeah, we are the utility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of our structure is set up as a utility. Yes. Yeah. So uh, IHT is a utility token, and iHouse dot com is also a fundraising uh, 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 with a legitimate uh, for some of the security product will follow the securities rules, mm -hmm. uh, securities laws, and uh, the utility will follow the utilities uh, policy setup. Okay. I see. So when people pay through uh, Bitcoin or ETH, what they are buying is not uh, the share of the uh, uh, assets. Uh, what they buy is the uh, membership of the uh, asset of this assets or this uh, project. I see. Okay. So and yeah, you're doing they, that to clarify uh, yeah. just for everybody. You're doing that to make sure that you can get around any of the legal implications, so that you can always be represented as a utility platform that's providing for utility service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so because we have deal structure, so one structure is uh, about the like the we, we call it security. Mm. So because uh, actually that's uh, what uh, we have already consulted the legal advice for like over a few months. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we need to apply for uh, license one four line in Hong Kong, for example. They are they are mm. selling funds. Okay, so that's basically the uh, a very fundamental uh, requirement of the uh, fund operation in Hong Kong or in other regions. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the first structure. The second structure is like we can sell through the crypto uh, community for for uh, for the ATO project. Then uh, they will they they will be buying a membership and uh, the uh, which is which is a timeshare membership. Mm -hmm. So they are because uh, uh, actually they will have a huge discount there. So that after they have already built, so uh, the market value will goes up to normal market price. So that they have the uh, um, uh, variation upside for the uh, memberships uh, 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 variation up, up gain. Mm -hmm. So, uh, those, so that's the two sales structure on here, uh, on this case. Yeah. So we will put on the website. So if you would like to invest by US dollar, so fall into the first structure. So if you would like to invest by uh, BTC or ETH, so fall into the second structure. I see. So essentially, what they're buying is a time-based investment. You know, it's calculated yes. according to a time, and that will expire in a long term. Yeah, okay. exactly. M much the same as you've mentioned with timeshare models. Okay, well, let, if we could talk now about your function, one of the things that's very interesting and quite new, I understand, is that not only is there the process of injecting fiat via the financial institution, but you can also obfuscate that or you can uh, eliminate that requirement and go straight through from crypto and inject that into the system. So can you tell us what those two options are? You can use crypto, and you can also use fiat. You mean the investor or for the user? SS for the user. The user. The user. Yeah, they can choose both. Yeah, because some of them may have a uh, lots of money. They have they fall into the equity investors' mm -hmm. uh, uh, regulation so that they can invest by uh, fiat. Okay. Yeah, by US dollar. So some of them may just for example they just have ten ETH. They they don't fall into any uh, credit investors' uh, uh, regulation okay. rules. Okay. Yeah, so they are not qualified actually. But they can buy their membership program by uh, 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 by crypto. Okay. Yeah, so that 
Yeah, so that uh, they can still involve in the membership program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that they they can they can still involve in the uh the future uh membership valuation gain there. Yeah. So crypto really gives them the the fundamental base level access, and if they want to be an accredited investor, that's when the fiat really comes in to play. If we could talk now um about your wallet, let's talk about that in terms of where you're at, where you're at, and what facilities are available for the user. Is that right? Uh, yeah, of course we'll have the wallet. Yeah, so we'll put on the uh, into our website and also we'll uh, try to make it uh, as uh, uh, user friendly and uh, uh, as like for some uh, uh, wide coverage uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. So we will have a uh, we call SDK for the different website uh, to install into the their mobile site or or uh, in, install through the API. Okay. So that uh, for every website we work with, they will have the API and SDK to link with. So that uh, they can, for for example, for the traditional property website, just like uh, those selling uh, the whole property, so they can uh, just embed our product into their website by easily imp implement. I yeah, see. so uh, that's uh, what we are doing. Uh, next step. So yeah. you're making it more interoperable and also more secure. Let's talk yeah. about that in the context of current blockchains, particularly the ones we know and love. Uh, for example, with Ethereum and Neo. Currently, you're going to be utilizing those, and you have a cross-chain potential. So can you tell us exactly what the plan is? Uh, the plan, actually, we are now on uh, Ethereum, and uh, we are building on uh, ERC-20. So uh, the next step, we will be uh, exploring with uh, Leo or their uh, investment, some of their uh, investment projects, mm -hmm. so to do the cross-chain, just like you said. Yep. Yeah, so the, the reason why is uh, we would like to have a, um, um, for example, right now it's the private chain with the with the uh, Ethereum blockchain. So it uh, it's also face different problem uh, regarding the Ethereum that face right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we have the public chain ourselves, so we will be easily uh, 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 launched a new project or a new token immediately. Yeah. So that uh, it uh, we I mean improve the efficiency a lot, okay. and uh, we can. Yeah, we can uh, also change the world into the uh, a pure platform, but not uh, uh, too much. I mean the uh, regulate. I mean the, the 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 process. We don't need to go through all the assets. Okay, yeah. so currently you are utilizing the the, ERC, uh, the Ethereum blockchain as an ERC twenty, and you're doing so in a permissioned design. Is that correct? You mentioned private. So are you a permissioned blockchain design? Yeah, we we are a uh, uh, we have the private chain. And also, we have the public blockchain by uh, 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 built on Ethereum ERC20. Yeah. So you have both. Yeah, uh, we have both. Yeah. Okay, and that's interesting because right now we're seeing the emergence of many different projects that have that duality, that dual structure of the permission and the permissionless element to provide for a conduit for consumers. Uh, if we could now talk about your statistics for a moment in the context of real estate globally, just how mm -hmm. big is the GDP? And uh, globally, what kind of market are we talking about uh, as you emerge as one of the front runners in the decentralized real estate, you know, business frame? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the the market size is very huge, and uh, it's like for some of we we study into the, the real estate market size is like two hundred trillion US dollar. Yeah, so it's a huge market size, and. Uh, just imagine if we can get one percent of the market share is very huge. So, yeah, so are you are, are you confident? You think you can do that? Uh, I think we can get sort of percentage of the new, um, I mean, developed property. Yeah. So, um, just for example, just that, uh, just use for example, Air, uh, Airbnb or WeWork as a mm. as a as a market valuation benchmark. So, uh, both of them is like uh, fifteen billion US dollar right now projects. So if we can have a certain percent of the um, building uh, that roll out on the uh, uh, in in our platform, so we will uh, of course we will have the uh, similar variation of of uh, uh, this platform. I see. Yeah, so we are we are quite confident on uh, having like twenty projects this year, and uh, maybe have a four to five times uh, growth next year. I see. So, so you're confident of twenty projects this year, and what's interesting, you mentioned one yeah. percent, just one percent. That's twenty trillion dollars. So that's quite extraordinary, you know, as a goal in itself for a company. But what even more yeah. exciting is your mentioning of current projects. You've got twenty going on. So can you tell us a bit more about those projects? Yeah, sure. We we have a Japanese project coming, and uh, the first the first one 
And Japan, actually, we, we, we are planning to have like four to five project uh, all along this year. And uh, we will have a uh, Singapore or, or a Southeast Asian project in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. And we will also have uh, a Greater China's project, uh, both uh, 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 Taiwan, Hong Kong or China. And uh, so here's three big regions, okay, across Asia. And then the uh, next, I mean, the second half of this year, we will go to US. And so that we will have a US property market. And then uh, maybe by the end of this year and also next year, we will uh, have a Europe, uh, European market. Yeah, okay. so uh, it's a like, regional rollout. Yeah. So obviously you have a lot of projects on, on, on your books or plan to be so. How is the yeah. other side going though in terms of users to fund and stabilize this economy you're creating with the real estate shared economy? Are you getting enough users interacting in this space to balance the, in, the, uh, the asset uh, owners injecting their projects into it? Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, we are working, uh, I mean, very hard on that. Yeah, because uh, we need to work with different fundraising channels and also different uh, community on that. But uh, because this is spot chain, so if you have a strong community, so uh, we are sure you will be more well easily. I see. So, so that's the big challenge yes. is balancing it with the it's community. A, it's a challenge, and uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, it's an opportunity. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if we can get this done, and uh, we will be uh, very sure that uh, we will be very very unique, and uh, 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 I mean every access good access will come to us to ask us to involve in their uh, early stage uh, investment. Sure. Yeah, so that. Yeah. And Ricky, how are you going in terms of you know projections for next year? I know that's a big question, but you mentioned twenty. Do you uh, foresee many more projects coming on board, to your knowledge, in the near future, beyond twenty? Uh, you mean more than that, or yeah, like you know of you know of twenty, but are you aware of any that are coming forward, or do you project it to grow and compound in its number? I think um, it really depends on the market acceptance level of the. Uh, this concept, the, the ATO, and also uh, do we have uh, enough manpower to launch all the projects? Because uh, mm. uh, actually, uh, it's, it's quite, I mean, the, the flow is, uh, uh, we, we take certain, um, we need to roll out several projects first, and then to see whether we can squeeze into life, for example, two weeks or four weeks for a project mm -hmm. to get this on our platform. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we'll try to speed up uh, in the uh, uh, second half of uh, this year. Yeah. Right, and obviously to kickstart the process, you had great capital and backing from capital firms such as the Neo Global Capital. You also had significant backing from Dragon, uh, Draper Dragon and many others. Yeah. Uh, some of them <laughs> we'll discuss, one particular one. But certainly they, yeah. were, they were really credible backers and that provided with a good plat uh, financial sort of basis to start. But what I did want to ask you is about future partners. Now you've got your financial backers to start, but do you have partner interests right now to expand and develop? You mean the partner regarding business, financial channels? Uh, business partners specifically. Business partners. Yeah. Of course, of course. We have uh, many partners in uh, um, Greater China and also Japan mm -hmm. and uh, Southeast Asia. And uh, we also have some partner in US right now. So uh, we are uh, you see, I'm. Uh, if you have uh, my uh, 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 timetable, you will see me uh, traveling everywhere to talk to the access owner and the mm. financial institutions. That's yeah, why so, you're in a hotel now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm now in Singapore, by the way. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, we, I will be attending a event uh, uh, this week in Singapore, and uh, at the same time, we will talk to se several property develop developers uh, in the Southeast Asia. Mm. Yeah. So, I think uh, everything just because. Uh, I mean, access owner actually uh, very welcome on us. Right. Yeah, so the the key is now how to launch the first project to let them see the flow, mm -hmm. and then we will open more channels for them to upload their uh, so we so called the uh, ATO white paper, mm -hmm. so that they can submit their white paper to us, and then we can work together to get different financial institution and also the uh, crypto community in the project. Okay, yeah. excellent. Well, if we could talk about your tokenomics now, um, obviously you'd appreciate that for much of my discussions, I try to uh, present uh, projects very early on because obviously that's beneficial for all parties. In your case, you're already on exchanges, which is unusual for me to discuss, but quite simply, the real estate benefits that you provide are the reasons why I chose to discuss this with you. You have a billion tokens already 
out, uh, well, you have them as your total supply. They aren't all available. Some of them are locked up and some of them aren't, you know, accessible via the circulating supply. But what I did want to ask you is, can you give us a rundown on your tokenomic facts, just basically about where you, how you're situated now with the circulation and more importantly, you know, what your plans are to unravel uh, for, the, uh, as, for the token to unfurl in terms of its application and use? Okay. Uh, so first of all, we we uh, uh, our token sales is done, and uh, we are already sell uh, thirty five percent of the token out to the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, at the same time, we have uh, like ten percent of the token we will uh, bundle with the bonus uh, as the marketing uh, uh, bonus to the investors. We sold uh, sold to the token sales mm -hmm. with the token sales. Okay. So uh, the total uh, circulating. Uh, token will be like uh, uh, around forty five percent at the end of the day. Okay. So uh, the other uh, fifty percent something will be held by uh, the foundation and the early stage uh, early stage team member and also the early stage investors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we all hold the tokens all together and the, and then uh, to um, to keep uh, for a long time because uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually we we are a uh, uh, long term project. We don't want to the token to be uh, circulate that at the very uh, beginning. Right. Okay, so it's the yeah, token structure uh, that we are, we are uh, uh, while we are doing ICO or while we are we are doing the token sales. Mm -hmm. We are that's already mentioned in the white paper. Okay, so which is, uh, quite, token, which is quite yeah. stock standard. You know, it's what you're saying is yeah. general, gen, general, generally common. But what I wanted to ask you was, given the context right now, we're seeing a downturn, a very significant downturn in the market. So right now, obviously, the value is probably lower than ICO or close to the ICI, ICO, ICO prices that we've seen in the past. So are you concerned about that, you know, the long term or what's your position there? Okay, so first of all, uh, our price compared to uh, Ethereum is uh, actually all, almost double to, okay. to Ethereum. Okay, so uh, but to the US dollar, we are still like 20% down, uh, 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 lower than the ICO, I mean the total sales price. I see. Yeah, but the, but the good thing is that we are the top 10% uh, of performance uh, uh, in the markets last month mm -hmm. when we got this to the ICO, so I mean to the exchange. Yeah, so that uh, actually we, we are the, I mean, we are quite uh, on the spotlight that what we will do next step, okay? okay. So this is a good news. But the, at, the, at the same time, of course, we will also have a challenge. Mm -hmm. So people will see, oh, if uh, you already in the ten percent, top ten percent list, so why you didn't raise up in in this market? Right. So we are actually waiting for the market to get uh, a rebound, and mm -hmm. then so that I, I think we, our token will also get rebound at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's the uh, because we can't talk too much about the price. Actually, of course, so. and, and you're obviously yeah, yeah. very optimistic about yeah, yeah. the it's, natural it's quite, process. It's quite factual. Yeah, it's yes, quite factual. and I appreciate that. Right. Yeah, but uh, for the token economy, I think because SS only need to, uh, uh, I mean, pay us uh, IHT to get this on our platform and use as the marketing token for airdrop to the retail investors. So uh, once more SS owner come to our platform so that they will buy more uh, IHT from the market mm -hmm. and do, we distribute to the uh, retail investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that this loop will keep on. Yeah, so uh, if we have a uh, um, five SS, 10 SS or like 20 projects within this year. So uh, that's quite a huge amount of uh, IHT will be buy from the markets from these uh, SS owners because they are actually they are, they are those rich guy, just they don't have enough funding for building up the projects. So mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, it will be it will be good for them uh, to get onto our platform to support uh, the token economy. Yeah. I see. Well, thank you for explaining that. Now I want to move across to something more challenging for you, uh, more controversial. And these are yeah. two issues I wanted to talk to you about, or perhaps an anomaly. And the first one is that in your white paper, it clearly explains more than once that you, uh, the IHT token itself is not intended to be an investment, specifically the token I'm talking about. So can you explain that? Because quite simply, my understanding from having read it is that in a nutshell, you're trying to allow for users to be investors, but the token itself is not for intent investment purposes. So how is that? Okay, so I think this question is regarding to legal. 
Yeah, so because uh, we have a uh, reference to many legal uh, opinions uh, mm -hmm. regarding how to be a like a pure utility token, but not a security token. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from our point of view, we would like to be utility more than uh, security. Okay, so yeah, so uh, in a legal way, uh, we actually can only allow the assets owner to buy for the market to run in the project, mm -hmm. but not allow for the end users to invest to the platform full HT. I mean, uh, invest uh, the 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 the, the project HT. Yeah. So, um, this is actually uh, uh following the legal advice. Okay. So this is the first one. Secondly, is uh actually uh people can buy uh ETH or BTC or USDT to invest in this project. So, uh, I think the the use of HT in this case is a lot uh the fundamental um I mean the advantage of HT. Yeah, so that we didn't emphasize on the investment, uh, 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 um, I mean, usage on this case. Yeah, which is actually something that's almost counterintuitive to someone who knows the traditional market, because traditional markets and real estate suggest and inf uh, and infer investment. So you're actually doing something different in that respect. Um, if we could yeah. talk now about you know your long-term goals, your vision. You know, what is the fundamental thing? If you wanted to send one message to all the people of the world about really what you stand for and what you want to achieve, what would it be? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we our vision is actually quite uh, huge. So uh, we would like to be the third generation of sharing uh, real estate platform. Mm -hmm. So what we call the third generation, the first generation is Airbnb. So uh, the people can uh, get the room list on their platform and then uh, with this I mean, uh, sublist to the uh, travel uh, users. Okay, so that's the first generation. The second generation is the uh, co-working space we work. So they rent the and renovate the space, and then uh, to uh, uh, to rent to uh, other uh, I mean uh, startups and also the 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 um, I mean uh, the corporate. Okay, mm. so uh, that's the second generation. So we would like to be the first generation because I I just said um, there's no significant uh, size of uh, uh, I mean fundraising platform of USA in the market right now. So uh, I think uh, people are very interested to get involved into the real estate projects investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it would definitely help us to grow in this vision very fast. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Ricky, it's been an absolute privilege speaking with you. You are the chairman and founder of this exciting project. It is one of very few in the world that are addressing the needs right now using utilizing blockchain. So Thank you. it's been it's been a privilege to listen to the iterations you know that you started with and prog progress now to being on exchanges. And no doubt, with the excitement of having twenty projects on your books and having many more planned, you are really trying to build out this in the real world and utilize businesses and util and try and garner more support through the community. So I do sincerely wish you all the very best for this year. But more importantly, I wish you. you the best for the next decade because you want to be around for the long term. So sure. for, all, for all those who want to know more, where's the best place to go? You mean? In terms of social media, where's the best place for someone to learn more? Uh, to learn more about IHT or to learn more about uh, crypto? Uh, no, definitely to learn more about you. So if I want to access okay. more and engage with you, obviously community is key. Where could we do that? Okay, so uh, you can actually uh, actually go to uh, Telegram. Uh, we have a uh, Telegram uh, uh, which is the, uh, called uh, HT Con. Okay, so mm -hmm. you just uh, uh, put the Telegram with HT Con. Okay. Uh, HT C O I N, and uh, we also have a uh, WeChat group, uh, but. Uh, Basically, that's more for Chinese, I think. Yeah, sure. because uh, it's, a, it's a Chinese. Well, well okay. hopefully, so Twitter is can... to come. <laughs> yeah, Twitter at the same time. Right. So we have the official uh, official Twitter. Sure. Yeah. So uh, you can you can uh, uh, yeah I, uh, uh, go to our official Twitter. Just search HDCon, mm -hmm. and uh, person my personal account is uh, wiki ng underscore twenty four seven. Okay. Because well, I'll make I sure I actually... put up a graphic for you to show people. Yeah. Right? Sure. That's great. Yeah. So uh, my Telegram and also my uh, Twitter account is also wiki ng underscore twenty four seven. Okay. Because I work twenty four seven actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just like all the other CEOs and founders working twenty four seven. Yeah, Ricky. yeah, yeah. So Ricky, yeah, on we behalf, are sure. On behalf of everyone, Ricky, thank you very much for your time. Obviously, we're getting very late for you. Thank you for the detailed explanation. Certainly, you've provided 
far more than I, I anticipated tonight. I look forward to seeing more about uh, you in the future in your presentations and in your, I guess, release of new white paper information uh, and more importantly yeah. as you build your business. So thank you for your time sure. and um, thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for your time and thanks for your audience time also. Yeah. Thanks, Ricky.